There is nothing I love more than a porch swing, which I happen to be hanging out on now while I'm at one of my clients' beautiful properties. I'll do a quick turnaround here so you can see it. But I want to talk to you about a question that was asked by one of our members. And the question is, when do I know I need a bookkeeper or an accountant or a CFO or anything like that? So the first thing I'll tell you is there's a whole chapter on this. I'll stop rocking so I don't make you seasick. There's a whole chapter on this in my book, Your First CFO, The Accounting Cure for Small Business Owners. But I want to break it down for you here. From the beginning of your business, you should be keeping track of where your money comes in and where your money goes out in your business. So thing number one, truthfully, forget about bookkeeper for a second. Make sure that you have a separate bank account for your business because that really does separate you from having a hobby into someone who truly has a business where you're building something that ultimately you want to be paying you money instead of the other way around. So at the very beginning, when you're just starting out and there's a few transactions, you have a little bit of income or maybe you have a lot of income, but it's only one or two people and you have some expenses, you can keep track of that in an, exp in an Excel spreadsheet or even just with your bank statements. OK, so you don't have to get too crazy when it's a handful of transactions. But what I would say is if at any point in time you are getting income from more than, let's call it, 10 people, and you have expenses and you pay bills or things get charged on your credit card, if you have more than 20 or 30 transactions like that a month, it's so, and, and you plan on building your business, right? If it's not just a hobby and you're gonna keep it going for fun, but if you really plan on building your business, that would be the point at which I would start bookkeeping, okay? So if you got more than 10 transactions a month with money coming in, so you're billing more than 10 people to pay you, and you're paying more than 20 or 30 transactions out for your software or your rent or whatever you're paying for, contractors, that kind of thing. So it's not really so much how much the money is, it's how many transactions is it. Because once it starts to get to be a larger number of transactions, you're going to lose interest in keeping track of it. And then it's going to pile up and you're going to say, oh, I'll do it once a quarter. And then you're going to have 30 income transactions and 60 expense transactions. And then you'll go, oh, that's not too bad. I'll let it wait for six months. And you're not really going to know if your business is making money or not, except for your bank balance. You'll see it either going up or coming down. But you're not going to necessarily know whether that's because you're spending a lot of money on the right things, more than you expected on the right things, or you're collecting more or less than you expected. So about the time you hit 10 transactions a month coming in and more than 20 or 30 going out, you want to start bookkeeping. And what I suggest right now, there are some free or very, very cost effective bookkeeping systems. If you intend to grow your business, then I suggest that you get one of the premier ones. And there are a few of them. Um, the best of the best are Zero and QuickBooks Online. And I just tell you right now, don't get QuickBooks Desktop. It would, and I'm not going to make a long speech out of this, but I will tell you that it would be like buying a BlackBerry now. Yes, they're good. Yes, there's some accountants and bookkeepers that use them, but they're the same ones who probably would get a BlackBerry now instead of an iPhone. And yep, I feel that strongly about it. So don't get a desktop version of anything. Get an online version for all of the right reasons. Number one is it makes your life a lot easier. You can all of a sudden stop keeping track of paper receipts. You can scan them into whichever of these book systems you, or bookkeeping systems you get and throw them away. And they're there and they're connected to the right transactions. And if you ever get audited, everything is there. When your tax guy or gal needs it, it's all sitting there. So this is perfection to me. And it's so easy when it's still just a few transactions. Even if you don't get a bookkeeper at this point, you do link your bank and credit card accounts that are specifically associated to your business to that software, be it QuickBooks or Wave. So even if you don't actually get to where you're pulling the transactions in and doing what a bookkeeper would do every month, all the transactions are going to be there all set up, ready to go. All your receipts are going to be there, set up, ready to go. And when you call a bookkeeper in, because it's your end, and yes, you have to have something to give your tax guy, all they're going to have to do is spend a little time classifying those transactions, as opposed to having to reconcile bank statements forever and like physically paper bank statements. They'll have an automated way to reconcile your bank statements, make the few adjustments that they need to make, and get this over to your tax accountant. 
rather than you having to put everything on an Excel sheet, figure out what was what all by yourself, a good bookkeeper can actually figure most of that out for you. They'll see a charge for Zoom and they'll know it's software expense. They'll see a charge for rent and they'll know it's rent. They'll see client money coming in and they'll know it's sales. So a lot of the work will be done for them, even if all you do is just get a bookkeeping system and link those accounts. Now, my recommendation for when you should get a bookkeeper is at the point where you are ready to be a fully grown up business and start to use that information to manage your business. Because here's the thing, you don't wanna be caught looking at detailed numbers. You wanna have something that says to you, here's my income, here's my expense, here's what's left, and here's what I'm gonna do with what's left. I'm gonna take some of it for me, I'm gonna leave some of it in the business. Those are your big questions as the business owner. So if you have a bookkeeper set things up the right way you can get reports that are not a detailed mess of data every month, but that instead tell you exactly those things. What did I make? And the cool thing about that is you know the only two ways you can influence that, I call them levers, the only two levers you have to influence how much money you make is price and quantity. So if you have a bookkeeper giving you this information every month, you can go, oh, I need to raise my price, I need to make more income, or I need to sell more of these, I need to make more income. And you can see what your expenses are and then you'll see, we'll be doing Friday 15s again, and I know I've done them in the past, that what makes that information meaningful is when you put it in context. So if you have a bookkeeper, which is what I highly recommend, you're now able to use all this information that's piling up on your bank statements to tell you what to do next so that you can make a decision about hiring, or you can make a decision about pricing, or you can make a decision about anything, knowing with some certainty that you're really using real information about what things are costing you and how much money you're making and be able to rely on those decisions. So I'll tell you, I'm at a client's right now, one of my larger clients, but this should happen even for smaller clients. And we've just gone ahead and looked at their five year projection. And we know what we want to bring to the owner of this business over a period of time, what we want to profit share. We know how many people we want to hire. We know um, how much we want to spend on marketing. And we can plug those things in now because we know we've got the history that's been very well book kept, book kept. I don't even know if that's a word. It is now. It's been really well book kept so that when we look at those numbers, this business owner can go, okay, yep, I get that. I can rely on it. Therefore, I'm going to start the hiring process for these five people today. And they don't have to hesitate that they're not going to have money to pay them. So this is where bookkeeping jumps in to shorten the answer. I'll give it to you again. Step one, make sure you have a separate bank account and credit card or cards for your business, separate from your personal stuff. Just do it, if it's, unless it's a hobby and you don't wanna grow. Number two, make sure that you start keeping track of your expenses somewhere, no matter how small you are. Once you get up to about 10 income transactions and 20 to 30 outgoing cash transactions where you're paying bills, then it's time to get a bookkeeping system. But then once you're ready to really be an informed decision maker in your business, that's when you want to get a bookkeeper and you want them to be taking care of your books and keeping them monthly so that at any point in time you can see those high level numbers and be able to make decisions that will move your business forward. So again, it's, a, it's basically a, the, the steps like that. Step one, get it out of being a hobby into being a business. Step two, keep track of it while it's easy to keep track of just in an Excel spreadsheet. Step three, once you start to get enough volume, get a bookkeeping system. Step four, get a bookkeeper when you're ready to actually make financially informed decisions. Now, you can skip through all those steps, jump right to a bookkeeper. There's nothing wrong with that at all, and I encourage it. Absolutely encourage it, but that can be a little overwhelming. But so you can take it in those four steps or you can jump right to getting a bookkeeper. And here's where to ask about that. In our group, uh, we happen to be launching this month bookkeeping for entrepreneurs that's going to include finance coaching for the business owners in a group setting. So we've actually created a spot now in Profit Concierge where you can start to bring in your business to Profit Concierge, get really exceptional Profit Concierge level bookkeeping, which is amazing. I got to tell you, this makes this information so useful to you as a business owner and get CFO coaching for me on top of that. So we're really excited about this. And this is a really good question that was asked by our member, Matt Denny. I'm really glad you asked it, Matt, because it's such an important question. Thank you so much, you guys. I'll see you on the next 
Friday. Nope, Finance 15. I keep wanting to call it Friday 15, but Finance 15. Have a great day. Drop questions in if you have them.